Dan Bongino wipes the smirk off Obama's face with a fierce rebuttal to his speech by US4Trump.com. Last Friday evening, Barack Hussein Obama spoke at the University of Illinois at Urbana Campaign, where uh, Champagne or whatever, where he uh, bashed President Trump on stage. Dan Bongino responded to the former president's comments and spoke out on how Barack inserted himself into today's politics. Obama's speech mentioned ex-presidents uh, saying uh, staying out of politics, Bongino uh, responded. During the Illinois speech, Barack said of ex-presidents gracefully exiting the political stage, making room for new voices and new ideas. And we have our first president, George Washington, to thank for uh, setting that example. After he led the colonies to victory as General Washington, there were no constraints on him, really. He was practically a god to those who followed him into battle, reported CBS News. Of course, he left out a more recent president who exited gracefully, Barack's predecessor, George Bush, who allowed Barack to govern without inserting himself into politics. Bongino said of this practice, I don't really have a problem with former presidents speaking out. I know the norm has been for former presidents to remain silent to allow their successor to govern effectively. Bongino believes in free speech, and that includes Barack. Let's just take a listen to the uh, clip here. President Obama, remember he told you to eat your peas? Well, he's back on the campaign trail. Using the stage to yes blast President Trump. It did not start with Donald Trump. He is a symptom, not the cause. He's just capitalizing on resentments that politicians have been fanning for years. The politics of division and resentment and paranoia has unfortunately found a home in the Republican Party. Here to react, former Secret Service agent and author of Spygate, Dan Bongino, congrats on the new book. We look forward to reading it for sure. I'm sure it will be a, a big success. Dan, he wouldn't even call him President Trump. Of course, it's Donald Trump. They want to delegitimize him at every moment. You watched President Obama, former President Obama's speech. What do you make of it? You know, it was disgraceful. Um, I mean that. It really was. And, and let me be clear on this. I don't really have a problem with former presidents speaking out. I know the norm has been for former presidents to remain silent and allow their successor um, um, to govern effectively. I really don't have an issue with that. There's no rule about that. It's a constitutional republic, and Barack Obama is a free citizen. What was disgraceful about that is Barack Obama was one of the most divisive presidents in American history, Pete, constantly relying on identity politics to put people into boxes the Democrat Party chose and Barack Obama highlighted and then sicking them against one another. Remember, when Barack Obama left office, upwards of 60% of people said the country was headed in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And one of those reasons was not just the economy, it was the fact that people were tired of this, this constantly throwing the flames on, on this fire of racial division yeah, but in the Dan, but it Dan, was a disgraceful you were, episode. You weren't ready for him, if you recall. <laughs> his former right. advisor, Ben Rose, wrote in his book, he says, he said this in, in his book, maybe this is, this is what Obama said, maybe this is what people want. Sometimes I wonder whether I was 10 <laughs> or 20 years too early. Wow. I was just ahead of the curve, Dan. You know, I, okay, I don't be candid with you. I was watching a, a show last night. I, I, for, for a second or so, I turned off Fox. So, <laughs> and uh, I was watching a show, and it was about some people in Kentucky who had chosen to help this person out in a grocery line who ran out of money. Uh, remember, these people in Kentucky and the other heartland Americans who are called deplorables by others, these are the people who supposedly, as you just said, weren't ready for Obama, as Ben Rhodes said. This is this elitist snob outlook, you know, this bow tie wearing, foie gras eating crowd in Washington, D.C. that forgets who actually trucks their goods, who makes this country. There are people out there working for a living who are tired of being talked down to by these elitist goofballs in the coastal bubbles they live in. No, we were ready for Barack Obama. Obama. Barack Obama wasn't ready for America. Dan, tell us how you really feel about mm -hmm. these things. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I need to open up a little oh, more. Okay. This is Lincoln, <laughs> Washington. I'm going to stand up for full gras later this hour. Oh, oh, yeah. Let him do it. I want to ask you, though, about this New York Times, this anonymous op-ed, because the president is calling on Jeff Sessions to investigate who wrote it. Is that feasible? And should Jeff Sessions be involved at all in this? 
Well, here's the problem with this, and I speak from experience. You know, I, I was a Secret Service agent under Barack Obama. I, I resigned. I didn't retire. I didn't take my benefits and my health care. I'm not, you know, I'm not looking for anybody's pat on the back. I just disagreed strongly with the direction Barack Obama was taking the country, and so I walked away. Um, this op-ed writer is a coward, uh, is a chump. Um, I'm, I'm actually horrified that a scintilla of my tax dollars, if it's one one thousandth of a cent, want to pay this loser. If you had a shred of dignity, you'd resign tomorrow, and if your grievances you believe are legitimate, you'd air them under your own name and make the case that Donald Trump isn't fit to lead. The problem is that this, this, this individual isn't thwarting Donald Donald Trump. He's thwarting the will of yeah. Americans who elected Donald Trump to enact an agenda they supported. Now, regarding the DOJ, I'm not sure on the criminal side, there's there's a lot of there there. I can tell you on the administrative and political side, though, yeah. this is a big problem. And if he's in the national security arena, then he definitely needs to go. Dan, I got a quick question on George Papadopoulos, because we were told, Dan, again and again, this was the key. It was going to bring Donald Trump down. During the break, I even Googled, there was a speech from Carl Bernstein, uh, commentator on CNN, Watergate reporter extraordinaire in November. He was in Chicago with David Axelrod, and he said Papadopoulos had to be reporting back to Paul Manafort, the campaign chairman, about his contacts with Russia, and he said this could be worse than Watergate, Dan, and yet yesterday we find out that Papadopoulos is going to jail for 14 days. 14 days, Ed. and then we find out, too, as John Solomon's been reporting at the Hill vigorously, that George Papadopoulos wasn't even interviewed for six months after the, I, after the FBI learned about this guy who supposedly played an integral role in the collusion scandal. This is the biggest scam in American history. We're all being played for suckers. And if you believe in this collusion hoax, I strongly suggest you seek an intervention or professional <laughs> mental health immediately. All right. you know, one man in the military, we call it, uh, probably you too, 13 days in a wake-up. It's not even 14 days. That's all he got in the clink. All right. All right. All right. You know, we, have a little bit right there. We, can't, we can't top that right now. Yeah, you gotta love Dan Bongino. He tells it like it is. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching.